Yiratzon, Parshat Balak, Elimu Diyad Refuat Kol HaCholim, Uvetocham, Tanya Bat Hoda Margarit, Yosef, Yair Ben Aviv Mechada, Harav Sivan Ben Sima Betor Kol Shah Cholei Yisrael. When we enter into Parshat Balak, there's an underlining theme that has to be dealt with in this Parsha. And the underlining theme of the Parsha is the element of change. It begins with the fact that Balak, Vayar Balak, et kol asher asa Hashem Israel, he sees what Hashem did for the Jewish people, and he wants it to change, he wants it to be different. Bil'am is the first Navi that we find from other nations. He's not, doesn't seem like a Jewish person, not a Jewish person, fighting against the Jewish people, He's a Navi, closest person to Hashem. That's a change, and that's different. But the greatest element of change in our Parsha is that Bil'am and Balak had one purpose. And that was not to curse the Jewish people, but to destroy the Jews in one second. When he cursed the Jews, the goal was to be able to demolish a nation. And in five seconds, or maybe 50 seconds, not only does he not demolish them, but he blesses them. What creates that change? What's healthy change and what's unhealthy change? And so to develop this idea, there's, there's two main questions on Parshat Balak. The first is, why would Hashem give Nevu'ah to people who are enemies. Why is Hashem letting people that are so negative be so successful? When we look in our history, you look 70, 80 years ago, you have characters just like Balak that want to destroy the world, and they were very successful. Within almost two and a half years, they conquer all of Germany, all of Poland, almost the entire Europe, and they're on their way to just cover the entire world and be so successful. So the first question is, why does Hashem permit that? Why does He give Nevuah to Bil'am? The second question is that there's a part of the story, which we all know from when we were children, but the question is, why is it essential to the story? And that's the story of the Aton, the donkey. As Bil'am goes on his journey to curse the Jews, there's this long parak dealing with the conversation between a donkey and Bil'am. So it's good for Disney movies, it sounds very interesting, but in the essence, what does it really matter to the story? It didn't change anything. It's not like Bilam decided not to go. So why is that story of the donkey so essential? And so those two questions are going to be addressed through one main issue. So this Fadimet, in the year 1885, describes something very interesting in the world. And he says, Ki HaKadosh Baruch Hu bara ha'olam Lihiyot nitzla madrega bemadrega. It says very interesting. Hashem creates a world, and in the world there are different levels. There's something called domem. The idea of the domem is that it is not active. It's a domem is a rock. It doesn't move. It doesn't change. It's sta it's it's um, stagnant. It doesn't change. The next level after domem is tzomech any vegetables that are growing, any trees that are growing. They're different than the domem, they're changing. But they can't speak, they can't really make a decision to change. The next level after tzomeach is called chai. Animals, not only can they move, but they can address each other, they make sounds, they more speak to each other, they're more progressive than the tzomeach. And after the tzomeach, there's something called a middaber. And what distinguishes a man from an animal is the level and the ability and the capacity of speech. And so we go from, this, from the domain which can't change, 
to the Midaber, which is the greatest changer because it has the greatest ability of speech. But says this Fadim at a very interesting point. These are all different elements. But he says that they're talui zebze. Each level is dependent on the level above it. So you have the etz, but the domem has a certain level where it connects to the tzomech. No tree can grow without earth, and no earth can be earth without the rocks which in it are contained the sand, which means that although they're separated, there's something that relates them together. There's a little like area where they could connect. The tzomech connects to the chai because for the chai to be able to live, they need tzomech. We all know it from Lion King called the circle of life. They're connected on the level that without the tzomech, the chai can't be alive. And same to the midaber, the people are, are connected on a certain level to the chai. They have like little dogs in their homes. They walk with them. They, they're, they're obligated on Shabbat to take care of them. So although the world is separated in four different levels, each level is connected to the level above. And says the Sfat Emet, that level is where change is possible. It's where the level of each thing underneath the other is aware that if their understanding of something above them, then they can change. The Tzumach, if it's aware of its ability to give sustenance to the Chai, through that it becomes Chai. That little tree that was just like sort of insignificant, because of its relationship to the level above, became the level above. Which means that in the essence of change is the awareness that your ability is needed to understand that something greater than you needs you. And so says this what I met so powerfully. V'chen Bil'am HaRasha. Bil'am received Nivua to show that you can become linked whoever you are, wherever you are to Hashem. Anyone. The idea of giving Nivua to Bil'am was saying, as any person in the world, you can be connected to Hashem. But what was Bilam's problem? Imaya mekir et mekomo levatel at smo la dibur shel Hashem. What made Bilam fail and not succeed is the simple question of was he aware that his ability was supposed to relate him to something greater than himself? And when it becomes selfish, then your ability becomes destructive and your change becomes a way to show off. I'm changing to prove that I'm better, not to prove that I can create something greater than myself. And so in a Parsha that deals with change, like we said that Bil'am could curse and destroy the Jews, and it changes in one second to a blessing, the essence of change is, are you aware that your ability is centered around one decision? Is your ability defining your greatness or is it about defining your concept that someone is greater than you? And if Bilam would have been aware that Hashem was greater, he would have been able to become not just Bilam, but Bilam Hanavi. And he lost it because it became about himself and transformed it into Bilam HaRasha. As we enter into the Parsha of Balak, we give us all a bracha to be aware of the fact that we must make one decision in our lives. Are we focused on us or are we focused on someone else? I've just begun this summer a journey in something called Nebe Michael Chuzat Sarah in Beit Al-Azraki. And when I spoke to Michael Ryler, to Ezra, I was asking them, what's the secret of the program? And they said that anyone who wants to volunteer is not volunteering in this experience to gain but to give. And in that one decision, I'm seeing how children are changing their own personal lives. When you're aware that your ability is the, is the greatest present to give, then you connect and you change and you get greater and greater. When you use your ability 
for yourself. You lock yourself in a jail that's greater than any other jail in the world. Shabbat Shalom.